Back to the phones. This is Thomas in Fairfax, Virginia. I'm glad you waited, sir. Great to have you on the program. Hello. Oh, thank you. Long-time listener. Um, I've been in tune with uh, everything that's been going on within Baltimore. I used to live in there, um, Ninth Town. Uh, I just wanted to bring your, to your attention the, another avenue that they're missing here with the, uh, the person who died while under custody. Um, when I was doing my residency back up in Ohio in the Air Force, the, there was a, uh, a young male who came in to the emergency room, 21, 22-year-old male who came in. He wasn't, he wasn't military, but we took care of military and non-military. But he had come in to the emergency room complaining of some neck pain and some tingling. We did a CT scan, and lo and behold, this guy was walking around for about 10 days with a C2 fracture, hangman's fracture, didn't even know it. If somebody could have come up to him and just knocked him on the head, he would have been completely paralyzed. And he had no idea. He would walk. He had been walking around with this thing for 10 days. And we found out he had been in a car accident 10 days prior to him coming into the emergency room. He didn't seek help the first time, which is kind of amazing. Um, but it was just literally by the, the luck of, you know, of whatever, uh, that he didn't end up, completely paralyzed um, prior to coming into the emergency room. And so, so the question you have is, what could Freddie Gray have been doing uh, in days ahead that might have injured himself in ways I, not even I he think you need, they need to hire some sort of detective and look into a, you know, to the, the days prior to him getting arrested and see if there was any such incident that could have occurred that would have resulted in this. If they can't find a, a really good reason for him to have gotten it while under custody, well, now it's interesting. An existing injury. The state attorney made a point of saying she was not going to release the evidence after telling us how transparent her office is. She really did. She said, we're not going to release the evidence. There's no grand jury here. There was no grand. I mean, huh. yesterday, I'm telling you, yesterday they weren't going to issue a report. Al Sharpton shows up. I don't know if it has anything to do with it, but it looks odd. Sharpton shows odd. up at, the next day, today. They vomit everything they've got, and they just throw charges at these six cops that nobody had any idea were coming. We're told, now maybe, I don't know, you you haven't seen the patient, obviously, but when I heard that he, he came out of that police van with his spinal cord 80% broken or separated, I'm... I'm Immediately started. How, what happened inside that van? How the hell does something like that happen? And I we mean, don't even were, hear about were, a rough were, ride today. So they were certain that, that he was showing signs of the injury after he got out of the van. Well, he was. When, they, when I saw him being dragged to the van, he was complaining yeah. of being in a lot of pain. And it looked like his legs were not functioning well when they were dragging him to the van, at least in the video. The video doesn't show the cops doing anything to him. And he's not attacking him or or any of that, right? So, uh, I uh, and and he wasn't secured with a seatbelt, and they're punishing these guys for that, even though that is a relative. I mean, like last week implemented rule, right? So I don't know how you break eighty percent of your spinal cord. Uh, well, I'm not sure which one. What, you know what exactly? It sounds like he had a, obviously had a, a, a cervical fracture. I'm not sure which one. I haven't seen the report, but. Um, there, so there is, there, it, it can actually happen where you can actually have a pre-existing fracture and walk around with it unbeknownst to the person who had it. Um, like, like, like I said, with our patient, it was, it was about 10 days prior to him presenting himself to our emergency room that he actually had yeah. two or what they call a hangman's fracture, had no idea he had had it. And he was so lucky he didn't become paralyzed just in, well. the, in the, in the interval. Okay, now I'm told that Freddie Gray did get into that police van under his own power. So while they were dragging him, his his he was dragging his feet on the ground when they were trying to get him in the van. And I don't know if that was his lack of cooperation, but I did see the tape. My my reminder here is correct. He did launch himself into the back of the van. His legs were working fine. That's on two different tapes. So something happened in the van, but no cop was in the back of the van. Yeah. And they didn't talk about a rough, rough ride today. The, 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 other, the only other thing of, to note, um, again, I don't know what fra what cervical vertebrae was fractured. Um, and I, I, How long was he in custody before he died? Um, was it a couple of days? No. No. It, it, it was minutes or half hour, oh, an minutes. hour. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, I I don't know. I but I mean it could have been. It's it, they do need to look into this. Well, the defense attorneys past. will. The defense attorneys will do everything you're suggesting here. They will try to look back into every day prior to this incident to find out just what. Uh, Freddie Gray had done what had maybe happened to him, where he was. I mean, these are serious charges, and they're going to have to be defended against. And the the cops union will come up with good uh, good lawyers for these for these guys. But this is just it's it's uh, I don't know. This is what folks another example of how you really have to fight. It's just hard. You have to fight getting caught up in the daily media narrative or soap opera. Here I am caught up in it by telling you what was being reported by ostensibly serious news organizations yesterday, not fly-by-night obscure websites, that they didn't have any evidence, that there was the medical examiner couldn't find any evidence of homicide whatsoever, that they weren't going to release the report, and we go from that in less than 24 hours to six people committing Second degree murder, manslaughter, what have you. I, it's, it's, um, it's, again, I'm drawn back to that old guy on the street who doesn't believe it, thinks it's, it's all for show. But that's to be understood, too. He's old enough probably not to trust anybody in government or in the police department, no matter what their race is.